It's the 25th of November 2024, and today Raspberry Pi launched the Pico 2W. Plus, of course, the SDK version 2.1.0 that we need to go with it. Let's take a first look. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. I only talked about the Pico 2W launch coming up uh, yesterday in my live stream. In fact, I talked about how quiet things have been and that we were really all expecting that Pico 2W launch. But my guess was that this wasn't coming until after Thanksgiving. How wrong was I? So the Pico 2W is using the same Wi-Fi chip and library versions that we had using for the Pico W, which is interesting and great. So we should actually all feel right at home working on the chip and the broad. But let me tell you all about it. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you there too. And please hit that like button on the video and subscribe for more. So the Pico 2W board has been launched, and of course this is based on the RPE2350. And it uses this RM2 module that we've talked about a bit on the channel before, which in actual fact is just the CYW4343.9 chip that we actually had on the um, original Pico W boards. So this is now up on there and on sale. So the new board, of course, has the higher clock speed that we've got of the Pico 2 range, so it's 150 megahertz clock. It's got twice as much RAM, so 520 kilobytes. And we've got some security features, some of which are really useful for the world of being online and Wi-Fi, such as the SHA256 um, hardware accelerator. And we've also got a lot of uh, interfacing, including 12 PIO um, state machines and a new HSTX high-speed peripheral for driving data out to things like displays. So does all this make this IoT heaven? Well, let's take a look inside and have a, uh, a look at what we're going to be getting, and then we can slowly evaluate that. If you haven't seen my videos or can't remember what was actually in the Pico 2 and this RP2350, let me just give you a quick background and, and bring you up to speed. So the Pico 2 range, including the Pico 2 and Pico 2W, are based on this RP2350 chip, which is their new chip from Raspberry Pi. This is a dual ARM Cortex M33, which means it's actually quite a lot faster and quite a lot more capable than what we had on the Pico 1 with the RP2040. Uh, it also has alternative cores that we can use instead that are based on RISC V using their Hazard 3 model. Um, they're perhaps a little bit more experimental. Um, both of these cores we can clock at 150 megahertz by default. You can actually overclock them as well. There, the chip itself has uh, 520 kilobytes of SRAM, and uh, on the Pico 2 and Pico 2W, that's supported with a flash chip um, of 4 meg. There are 26 GPIO lines available to us on these boards. They're actually slightly more available via the RP2350, particularly in the B version of that chip. But um, uh, on this board and the way it's laid out, we've only got 26 available to us. Uh, four of those are ADC, so analog digital converters. Of course, there is actually only one analog digital converter on the board, uh, and we just start switching between which of those channels we're using and monitoring. And uh, we've got 12 PIO state machines available to us. So I've done a whole load of videos already talking about the Pico 2 and the RP2350 from talking about its launch and the capabilities of the board in theory, uh, from how to set up your C++ environment to um, the comparison, uh, some comparison performance between the RP2040 and the RP2350, uh, how to get free RTOS running, because a lot of my projects use for IATOS, especially when you get into the world of Wi-Fi and talking to connectivity. It's really useful having free RATOS kernel there to enable that because you can do things like sockets. Um, 
the RP2350 bug, yes, that bug still is going to be present on this Pico W board. So if you are using uh, pull downs on um, uh, via the internal resistor bank, there are some nasty implications that you need to think about. And finally, I did uh, uh, one talking about SHA256. That's really relevant to what we're talking about here in terms of Wi-Fi, because that underpins a lot of TLS communication. So what is this Pico 2W? Well, really, it's just everything that we talked about previously around the Pico 2, plus this RM2 module. And that RM2 module, well, really, that's just a CYW43439 chip. Um, which has the capability of giving us Wi-Fi version 4 capability, 802.11n. So this is single band, so it's all unfortunately on, on that limited 2.4 gigahertz band. So you don't get a great deal of channels and you know we all live in worlds where that band is actually quite contended and we're all trying to use a 5 gigahertz instead. But that's what these sorts of boards have and you know is quite consistent across most microcontrollers. It uses a 1.1 array or um, a SISO uh, to communicate out uh, for Wi-Fi. That again means it's not going to be the most powerful uh, capability at, at capturing and broadcasting on Wi-Fi. Um, but you know it is what it is. Um, uh, transfer speeds are up to 96 megabits per second which is pretty good transfer speeds really. Um, and be aware that on the Pico 2, it is sharing uh, its aerial between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and that may have some implications. On the Bluetooth side, well, we've got Bluetooth class one and class two support using Bluetooth 5.4, and you've got a bunch of other Bluetooth capabilities there, including uh, LE, so um, low energy capability Bluetooth uh, support. All good stuff. I must admit, I haven't looked or played with the Bluetooth side of this world very much yet. That's something that um, I still need to do. But to enable all, all this Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, what you're going to need is um, the SDK. Um, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, the other things that I guess the Pico 2 brings to this party is all of that additional RAM. And when we're talking about Wi-Fi and particularly things like uh, web services, actually having additional RAM so we can pull down very big packet sizes is, is quite useful. I mean, imagine if we're doing firmware updates over the air, of, um, we can ping back much more data to mean that we actually are doing that in, in fewer chunks as doing uh, flash updates, which is quite possible on this. So all nice stuff. One of the interesting differences between how the Pico W was launched and how this Pico 2 W have been launching is this uh, Wi-Fi chip and how that's being presented. Because it is almost being shown as a module and a module that's available to us. And certainly some suppliers are actually selling that separately. So, you know, instead of with the world of the Pico W where our only option was to buy it in that form factor, and this is really important if you know you're trying to do low run volume uh, productions of, of Wi-Fi enabled devices that you're building. If you actually were just for limited to this is your only form factor you can use. But now we can actually choose our form factor. So I can buy an RM2 module separately and then I can connect it up how I want to any RP2350 board I want to design myself. Or I could buy suppliers who have actually already placed it onto their modules and in potentially different form factors. Or things like the stamps, which are coming, which are, you know, just uh, really the enablement of the chip and just the supports around it, and we can then build our own. Now, that's really useful for actually building IoT enabled devices and perhaps gets us a little bit closer to the IoT heaven I mentioned earlier. So without software, really all of this hardware is just nice paperweights or, you know, nice things to put on the wall. If we want to actually make it do anything, we need some software. And at the bottom of that software stack is the SDK. And 2.1.0 uh, version of the SDK launched today as well. And the drivers and support libraries enabling 
this Wi-Fi capability and Bluetooth capability from within that are the CYW43 driver, which is still consistently on version 104 from what it was on the SDK200, which means we're actually using the same version of that driver as we had for the Pico W. And the same is true for LWIP. We're on version 220, and that's consistent from what we've been using for Pico W projects. So that should make this a really uh, easy conversion as we move stuff over to running on a Pico 2W. So you won't be surprised therefore that actually we have the same four library modes that we can use that either to use the CYW43 in none mode, arched none mode, which is what we basically use to be able to flash the onboard LED or to um, in pole mode where we're actually running quite close to the hardware and actually polling for uh, Wi-Fi activity. Uh, thread safe mode where we're getting a little bit of that done for us by threads in the background or going into free altos where we get things like socket capabilities enabled for us and a complete IP management thread that's sitting there in the background doing everything for us which is really nice and tends to be where I go for um, more advanced um, IP protocols like you know HTTP and HTTPS. So Internet connectivity, you know, we're going to initialize this CYW43 in the same way that we did on the Pico 2, on the Pico W. We're going to do Wi-Fi connectivity and connect it to our, our base station or provide a service in the same way that we did for the Pico W as well. We've got sockets if we're using free Otters kernel and uh, the additional LWIP apps are there as well if we want to use them. And I've used some of those for things like HTTP in the past. The nice thing that I'm not sure has been there previously and I notice is now there is it is quite convenient now to be able to reconfigure how that module, the RM2, is actually connected to the Pico 2 and the RP2350. So we can actually define all, all of the pins that are in use and how that is being connected. And we can either put that into a board file for actually specifying a new board type to, uh, for, for the compiler to use, or you could override it by just putting these as definitions in your CMake list file uh, at the top and actually uh, pushing that out. Either of which means that actually we can use this module and connect it how we want and make use of it how we want on our projects. Now that's really interesting because one of the things that uh, concerned me about buying one of these modules was um, I couldn't actually probably connect it how Raspberry Pi, Pi do because on the Pico W uh, Pico and indeed the Pico 2W the way that this module is connected uses GPIO pads that are not actually available and externalized on those, uh, those boards itself. So you can't, from an external point of view, use exactly the same pads. So it's nice to know that actually we can reconfigure it and do it how we want, and therefore it and the libraries will then use that because that makes that much easier for me to reuse and reconfigure how I'm using these modules. How about RISC V, John, you ask? Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really played with RISC V enough, and I've done a little bit of research today to try and find out what is available on RISC V in terms of the IP stacks and stuff. And uh, to be honest, I'm I'm not sure. Um, after all looking around that for a, a, for about an hour, I'm still not sure. So um, yes, RISC V's there. I think it, I would class it as definitely experimental. Um, it's um, certainly fun stuff to, to look at and play with. Are you going to be able to get into the IP world and write that? Yes, probably. Is it going to be productionized LW, um, productionized um, IoT devices? I would really suggest not. Um, it's, um, it's experimental, it's fun. It's what we might be doing uh, in a version or two's time. But um, yeah, um, not sure really. I'll come back to this if you if you're interested. Let me know, and I will spend some time digging into this and see if I can get some examples. Once I've got the actual chip in front of me and board in front of me to try these things out. 
So when Raspberry Pi launched the Pico line and the Pico 1 line as they're now calling it, so the Pico 1 and the Pico 1W, uh, that was it. It was just those two boards. Oh yes, okay, third parties produce some really interesting additional boards, but from a Raspberry Pi point of view, that's all we actually got. Um, we've now seen from a Pico 2 point of view that we've got the Pico 2 and the Pico 2W. But there was a really interesting little teaser at the bottom of the announcement of these coming out that actually they're going to do some other boards and they've got some other ideas as they put it. This is quite exciting to see what other potential things we start seeing coming out of Raspberry Pi using these chips and uh, potentials for the RP2350. Who knows? But of course, third parties are also producing great chips and great boards. We've already seen Pi Moroni produce some really interesting boards that are out there. And um, I know that WaveShare are working on, uh, or they're releasing a new version of the touchscreen that I reviewed and looked at um, only a couple of months ago uh, using an RP2040. There'll be a board of one of those using the RP2350. So um, really exciting to see what all of these third parties bring and use these chips to do. So I've got my Pico 2W on order and um, I'm sure I should have it in a few days and then I will start working on it and I can then share with you some of my projects, ideas and my experience of using it. If you've got any ideas or questions then please do get in touch, I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the other payment methods in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco next year. And I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do hit that like button and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video on my channel. Goodbye for now.